How do you determine what sound insulation you need on a window in a given wall construction to achieve proper sound insulation against outside sources like traffic? I'm going to show you. This is my hometown, Umeå, and this is a noise mapping of my hometown. And in this graph you can see roads, the more heavy traffic roads, they get into this purple bluish color and you can really see where the most cars are driving. And then you can see quiet zones and stuff like that. And here down here you see what kind of sound levels we're talking about. So it's equ equivalent. Now, let's zoom in a bit. Here we, we move in this area here on the other side of the, of the river. This is the main city center. And here's what we're looking at down here. Yeah. What happened now? Oh, that. Sorry. There it is. Now we move in a bit closer. Or did we? No, this is the one I was looking at. Sorry. Yeah, here. And then we can increase the detail. We go even further down. And you now we start to see the special buildings here that I'm talking about. And here you can see how the sound is propagating in between the buildings here. So you, you get the inner, the yard here behind the buildings. They, they act like a kind of a sound shield towards against the road here. So this is a really noise exposed place in Umeå probably one of the worst where you get a up upwards of 70 75 dBA noise exposure on the on the apartments that are facing the road here so that's quite a lot Equ equivalent sound pressure level so how do we do this then this is um, the next step we go in here and then now you can see it's story level two and three so you can get these noise maps now on different heights above the ground level so you can you will map the house in in 3d and you can see then for each story you will get a somewhat different noise map depending on what kind of reflections you're talking about from the ground and from other buildings and uh, the distance to the road if the distance is much larger then the sound level might go down and anyway so what we do in a case like this windows are expensive if you need high sound insulation class then the cost per decibel increases exponentially. Thus, it can be highly motivated to do a very detailed analysis and really optimize what kind of windows do we need in a case like this. And if it's a large building with many stories and many, many windows, this can amount to a huge amount of money. So it's in everyone's interest to optimize this as much as possible. So let's zoom in yet another level here. Now we're, let's look at one apartment here on, on, on one story. And now, now we see here that we got bedroom one, bedroom two, we got the living room and a kitchen. And now using these different color codes, we can, see, we can identify what is the sound pressure level on the outside of the facade. We can even do this with a really high resolution grid if we, if we want to and if we have the calculation horsepower to do it. So we can get, we know it's... 73 decibels outside bedroom 2 for instance and then we can check the the separating partition like this one so you got s1 and s2 surface 1 and surface 2 it consists the whole facade is a part partially is wall and partially is window it's uh, glass and then it's and it's wall and then using these equations we can solve them for various construction types and determine do we need to increase the sound insulation of the wall and if we do that can we use a somewhat cheaper window or is the wall construction kind of maxed out to reasonable le level and then it's perhaps better to just increase the the window and you have to balance this because the, the ratio between wall and window can be can have quite a huge effect so if you look at the bedroom two here the ratio the there will be a lot more glass compared to wall in this room compared to bedroom two because now the window is the same size window but there's a lot more wall here and that means that you could perhaps get away with a simpler window in this room whereas in the smaller room you might need a better window even though you have the same sound pressure level outside and as you can see you can do this now for every story in the building and for every room and really optimize it on a really detailed level and that can be motivated to do that 
if you have very high sound pressure levels and a lot of windows, then you probably should do it this way. If the sound pressure levels are more, if they're lower and, and it's not that bad, it might be more cost effective to just divide it into larger chunks and check check the whole whole side in the north, south, west or east perhaps. Because there is also a cost to do this detailed analysis. If you got like 20 different types of window sound clauses. It's going to be a lot of work on the production side to just get them up there and mount them. And that way it would be perhaps easier if you have like high sound, high sound insulation and low sound insulation, like two groups, and you could just bam, bam, noise exposure side, use this clause, quiet side, use this one, fine. Then it's much simpler to, to install them in the production where, and you will save money somewhere else in your project. But like I said, if you have high noise levels, requires high sound insulation clauses of the windows, and the cost per decibel will increase exponentially the higher you go, and that will motivate a more detailed analysis using these equations and this method. So that's a, a quick rundown of, uh, of uh, how we do it as, an, as us acousticians when we choose what kind of windows we should use in the building. And the calculations, they are based on, uh, let's see if I can move back a little bit with this one. So you have the geometric, geographic height curves. You, you have a full 3D model with, with buildings and everything. So you can take care of the ground reflexes and how, how you get acoustic shade from different buildings and, and, and such. So, But those type of calculations can be quite uh, computationally... Uh, require high requirements on the on the calculation and uh, horsepower so you have to find a a, a good uh, balance between calculation time and precision and yeah there this is a whole whole science in itself to do these kind of measurements and no uh, calculations sorry <laughs> you can do measurements also in the field and and to to verify your assumptions when when the building is is finished but that's a completely different story could be a topic for another video Anyway, in today's video, I'm wearing all blue on the top at least, except for this little pocket square with a little splash of green. So it's like darker blue, lighter blue. This combination light blue shirt goes very well with a darker jacket. It's a pretty fail safe combination. And you've got the same colors here in the pocket square, dark blue, light blue, and some green, which I also have in my eyes. But the thing with this jacket I want to show you, it's if you have a jacket and you take a look here on the inside here you can see what kind of fabric it is what kind of wool and this says super 140 super lightweight wool fresco weaving and this one is actually quite an amazing jacket because i've been wearing this i've been driving it in my car and look at it there's hardly any wrinkles on it so this is a awesome material for traveling if you can only bring one jacket and you you can wear this one in the airplane and in the car and and travel around with it and it still looks good without wrinkles and that's a fantastic property to have if you want to go out and and travel and you want to look good while doing it so i really really like this one it's not good in the winter because it's too cold but in the summer months it's uh, one of my all-time favorite jackets so you always consider what kind of material you got in jacket it can save you a lot of headache if you go for the right one. See you later.